A very sensible offseason has now been overshadowed by a training camp that honestly feels pretty chaotic for the LA Rams. Hi, I'm James of Faithful Angelino Sports with a Rams preview for 2024. Can the Rams build on their surprising playoff run from last year? If you enjoy talking about the Rams, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelino Sports. We talk a lot of Rams football here. Looking back over the last seven, eight months, it's kind of amazing that the entire offseason wasn't every bit as uncertain as the one two years ago when the Rams literally tore their defense to pieces in order to get under the salary cap. Consider, Sean McVay had to once again replace big chunks of his coaching staff. McVay's coaching staff gets raided every single year. This time it was for defensive coordinator Raheem Morris, who was hired as head coach of Atlanta after the Rams finished 10 and seven and qualified for the playoffs. And Morris became such a hot commodity because it, again, in order to get under the salary cap, the Rams purposefully tore that defense apart. They just basically made it Aaron Donald and 10 randos. So certainly, congratulations is due to Morris. The dude absolutely earned his next shot. But it wasn't just him. Defensive line coach Eric Henderson went to USC. But then, something we didn't know was going on as well at the time. In the locker room at Fort Field of Detroit, after the Rams, in the moments after the Rams got eliminated by the Lions, word started spreading in the locker room that Aaron Donald was going to hang it up. Now, you and I can argue where he places in NFL lore. Is he the greatest of all time? Is he on the, the Mount Rushmore of whatever? Let's all agree that the guy is a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer. And that his retirement leaves a gaping hole in the Rams' defense. Everything the Rams schemed was centered around Donald gobbling up as many men as possible, three, four sometimes, and giving the Randos a path to excel. But Donald and the Rams kept mum, and the Rams knew they had to plot. To their credit, the Rams then plotted out an extremely sensible offseason for both sides of the ball. They finally had a first-round draft pick after years of effing their picks. They spent the first two choices on defensive line. They grabbed teammates from Florida State and Jared Verse and tackled Braden Fisk. Now ESPN panned the Rams for trading up to Land Fisk, but everyone in the game was saying, look guys, Aaron Donald is a unicorn, one of one. But in the aggregate, the, in the aggregate, the Rams are going to have potentially a terrific and young defensive line. Sensible. I love it. Meanwhile, of course, the Rams, because they made all the, because they tore their defense apart more than a year ago, they were under the salary cap now and they had money to invest. So the Rams doubled down on their so-called duo blocking scheme. They retained Kevin Dotson. They signed Jonah Jackson to play the other guard. And then they decided to move Steve Avila to center. The idea was to put more than a thousand pounds of muscle right up the middle to protect Matthew Stafford and to create running lanes. And even if Stafford did get dinged up, you could do a lot worse than Jimmy Garoppolo as a backup. Sensible. You would not be crazy for thinking, wow, all this panic over what the Rams would have to do, and you're going into training camp and the only thing you have to worry about is reworking Stafford's contract? That's an amazing offseason. And once training camp opened, the wheels started to fall off the bus. Look, the, the thing is on this channel, we deal with reality. This has not been a good training camp for the Rams. Yes, they reworked Stafford con Stafford's contract, but then three starting offensive linemen got injured. Then we found out one of those three injured linemen would be suspended for two games even if he were healthy. Moreover, we found out that Avila has been seen recently practicing at guard, now with Jonah Jackson at center. Also on offense, Stafford got dinged up for a while. Puka Nakua was dinged up for a while. We haven't even mentioned Tyler Higby, the tight end, who was injured in the playoff game and is in no position, condition to practice even right now. 
Now, I will grant you that Stafford and Nakua are playing. But wow, that's a ton. And we haven't even mentioned that despite the defensive line being rebuilt, there have been last-minute changes to the defensive unit as well. Linebacker Ernest Jones. He was called the, quote, unquestioned leader of the defense with Donald gone, unquote. And he gets traded to Tennessee. Now, I want to be real with you guys. Again, we deal with reality here. I'm not trying to tell you that the Rams are trash. I still think this is a playoff team. Here's why. Stafford missed two games last year, and yet he still threw for almost 4,000 yards. Nakua became a household name in the process. He rewrote the rookie receiving record book. Moreover, Nakua doesn't have a problem with being physical. That makes him their next Robert Woods. Cooper Cup had one of his worst seasons with a nagging hamstring injury. Cup won the Triple Crown two years ago, and yet he might not be the number one guy anymore. How would you like Cooper Cup to be your number two guy if he can remain healthy? And then you get third receiver Demarcus Robinson, who's developed quite a bond with Stafford. They like Jordan Whittington of Texas. And by the way, we still haven't even mentioned Kyron Williams, who had a breakout season last year at running back despite missing games to injury. And even if he gets hurt again, the Rams drafted Blake Corum of Michigan. So they'll have the same type of power back. The offense doesn't have to change. You're still putting points on the board. This is going to be what's important because much like last year, the Rams offense is going to have to control the pace of the game. Stafford is going to have to be a point guard in that respect, not just in terms of dishing passes, but working the clock. Because like I said, injuries and a little bit of chaos. Now the Rams should like their defensive line. We did mention that. The rookies coming in, they're gonna match up with edge rusher Byron Young, who had eight sacks last year. Kobe Turner was in discussion for NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year. But losing Jones is a gut punch. The point of having Donald was he took up so many opposing offensive linemen that it opened paths for people like Jones to make tackles. So Christian Roseboom and Troy Reeder are the so-called next guys up at inside linebacker. Meanwhile, in the backfield, Quinton Lake can play safety or the slot. Darius Williams is back from Jacksonville, but just this week, he went on injured reserve. He's going to miss at least four games. And Tredavious White, he's still on the mend from Achilles tendon surgery, which is the possibility that that position, defensive corner, can blow up in their faces again. If he's healthy, he's a sneaky good signing. A scout calls his cover skills stellar, but it is an Achilles injury. Finally, the Rams answered a major issue on special teams by drafting a kicker they really like in Joshua Carey from Stanford. So what does this all mean? It's hard to imagine the Rams being a threat to San Francisco in the division. Wish they were, I don't think they are. I mentioned how the defensive line is young and Jones was traded. What that tells me is I think you can run on the Rams. And the Niners run. They run hard. I don't see these guys stopping Christian McCaffrey. Could be wrong, but I don't think so. And because it's hard for me to see them beating the Niners in the division, that would make them a wild card. And it's hard to see the Rams, therefore, making a Super Bowl run this year. Last year, they get off to this quick start. I'm not even sure they're going to do that this year. They're opening on the road in Detroit. Detroit is a team that can rush off the edge going against two possible reserves at tackle. That is a tough call. So you know the Rams can put, the, put points on the board, but you've arguably lost the game's greatest ever defensive lineman. You follow that up with trading your best linebacker. You're out at least three defensive backs to injury, two offensive linemen to injury, a third to suspension. That is a hell of a lot of change to withstand. But it's still a good football team. 
Maybe they get another 10 wins. Maybe it's just nine, but I think that's enough for them to get in the playoffs. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. And if you enjoyed talking Rams football with me, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We talk Rams football almost every day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.